I think it, it can go back to the thing that Jesus said, you've heard it said this, but I say to you that. You know, I think part of what he's saying is, here's the, here's the bottom limit, don't kill people. But really the point isn't to avoid murder, but to learn how to think about people the way God thinks about people. And I think there are two things I would suggest. One of them is to always get to the heart of the matter and not the bottom limit. The bottom limit is what's the law, what's the rule, don't do this or do this. It's that tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And even though that's not incorrect information, that correct information doesn't have the power to bring about change. You know, Paul addresses that in the book of Romans when he says, the law is limited by the flesh. And because the flesh is the way that we fulfill the law, it doesn't have the power to transform us. It just has the power to inform us. And so, so the first thing I would say is focus not on what the law says or the rules are, but recognize the heart and the spirit behind that. If we, if we help people know that God wants to love through them, murder becomes a non-issue. If we help people learn to have true and, and, and um, meaningful intimacy, then lust becomes a non-issue. Um, and so uh, the balance for me is to recognize, number one, the heart behind it. Secondly, and probably most important is, I, I think it's just crucial that we understand, go all the way back to the Old Testament, God says, I want people who learn to live by every word that proceeds from my mouth. You know, one of the things I emphasized yesterday is that we were designed to receive, contain, and broadcast the breath of God. And what that means is that our soul isn't really functioning rightly unless God's word and breath is coming to us, moving in us, and moving through us. And so the second thing I would say is we've got to teach people to live by the process of hearing God's voice, containing his spirit, and broadcasting his spirit to the world around us. If what we tell people is what they need to know and what they need to do, they can know and do right things but still not receive, contain, and broadcast God. And so returning people to, to become people who live by every word that comes from his mouth, not just the things that we read and know intellectually, is that I think one of the, one of the places where we've been steered off course is that we, we miss the difference between content and process. So content is what we tell people, process is the way that we tell people. And so what we tell people is, speaking of the disciplines, read the Bible, uh, pray, uh, fast. There's, there's all the different things that we tell people to do, but what we don't always tell them is that there's a way to do all of those things that's death, and there's a way to do all those things that's life. And if, if we do those things out of compulsion, out of guilt, out of uh, fear, if we do them in any way out of self, then they, they have no ability to produce life. But when the breath of God leads us to the scriptures and opens the scriptures to us, when the breath of God leads us into communication and communion with God, when the breath of God leads us to deny our flesh in some way and, and respond to the spirit instead, then those disciplines not only come from life, they produce life. And it's that difference between content, which is here's the information we should know, versus process, which is the process of how we're supposed to live from God to us and through us. And, and every discipline uh, has the ability to be both death and life. Paul says it this way. He says, whatsoever is not of faith is sin. That seems kind of harsh, except that we've got to understand faith comes by hearing and hearing is receiving. So whatsoever doesn't come from receiving, containing, and broadcasting is without God. If it doesn't come to us, it's not.